Hello, Scratchers. Hope you're enjoying being the wordsmith. And today is your turn to be the mason. I know it's very fascinating for many of us. I know for me it is to watch a wall coming up brick by brick. And I don't know how many of you have played Tetris. Now, today's project, it is not inspired by Tetris. But it is rather inspired by one of the Panchtantra programmers who had created a dam maintenance project in which we had to fix the wall. I, I decided to use that project for today for various reasons. A, it is extremely interesting because of a lot of math used in this project. Now to put together, uh, there, there's a wall, you know, layer by layer fabric being created and there are two kind of bricks, a white brick and a narrow brick. We are using W to pick up a white brick and N to pick up a narrow brick. And we are using space to place it at the right position. In this project, it is really interesting to deploy some basic math, but the way it comes together to help you do this is very interesting. So all the concepts which you have been utilizing in terms of sensing, in terms of placement, you know, using variables to really control a lot of things is going to be coming together. Now, you definitely need to use paper pen for this challenge today. I keep saying this and I will reiterate. Please do not try to do these challenges by using tutorial code without really knowing how to apply it. What is the right way to do is to understand what is the code doing? You do it, you test it. The most you learn in coding is when you make mistakes, you troubleshoot, you identify what is the bug, why is something not working and you fix it. Now in this project, what we have is we have just three sprites. That means we are using a lot of cloning. So that's going to come together for you too. Now this wall frame, we are going to add one by one. Now I want you all to do at least three of these frames. Now, what does this fall frame do? That initially we are setting the brick row count. We are creating a variable. All these variables, because they are being used for clones and across different sprites, they have to be made for all sprites. So the brick row count initially set it to one. And what we have done here, we have waited until the first layer is done. That is the five white bricks have been placed and the four narrow bricks have been placed. After that, it creates a clone of itself and it increases the brick row count by one and it places it up here. Right now, because it is only two layers, not use any loops and I've done pretty raw coding here. I would love to see how you can use certain loops and math to add the third loop. Now the white brick code. What we are doing in this code is we are on the key press of W. We are creating a clone. And then once the clone gets created, we let it wait till the next key is placed, which is the space bar. Once the space bar is placed, it comes and fits here. Now where it gets placed is determined by, the, by a certain math. The first thing you want to therefore understand is the math for the brick. Now how to do that math? So what you do is your brick, which fits exactly into this wall frame, you write down what is its X and Y. So you can see here X is minus 200. Now you move it to the next position and you see what is the map. It is minus 96. Now you do some calculation. How much did you move it by? So from minus 200 to minus 96, right? One plus in here, it doesn't matter. So basically it's about 100 and 304. That is how much it has moved. This is for the first one. For the second one, it moves again another 103. Next one, the same thing. Next one, the same distance. But every time what you're doing, this by 1, this is by 2, this is by 3, this is by 4. So you actually do the math, you create a table, you do the math. Where should this be placed? Now the y position for this is going to be same for row 1. Once row 1 is complete, and it changes to row two. Did you, did you observe the code? We are waiting for the white brick to be completed by five and narrow brick count to be done four. So when this entire row is filled up, only then the next one is added. Now when the next one is added, you want this to be placed here. And so you again note down the X, X value and the Y value is changed now. And this, it will continue to move in the same math model. So this game is really, really is being able to understand how to use 
simple math. It is simple math, just addition and multiplication to do the placement. Now, what we're going to do is on the click. So we are using a forever loop because we want to identify. Now you don't, you can ignore this first wait until for a little bit because this got added to solve certain problems. And therefore a lot of variables get added when you need to sort out something. So what you've done in this forever loop, you are checking when the W key is pressed. So in fact, when you start with your code, this is how it will look like. When W key is pressed, you, you know, because right now the total number of bricks used for the two rows is only nine, five here and four in the second row. And bricks come expensive. So we are not just loading them up. So we are creating exactly nine. One is original and eight clones. So this is going to be the initial code you're going to write that is in the forever loop. If key white brick W is pressed, we are generating a clone and we want to generate only as many bricks as we need in this game. That is for two rows, nine. You're going to add the third row. So you're going to accordingly put that and you can use variables here. You can say total white brick count. That's, that's the better way to code. So you just change, so you create clone and we are setting another variable white brick to one. That means a white brick has been cloned and now it needs to be placed. You do not want to keep picking up bricks until this brick is placed. So that is why this extra variable is being used. So this is almost like saying work in progress. I've taken one brick and I'm putting it and we are giving it a wait for two seconds for all this placement. This is a time which you can vary depending upon the speed at which you want your game to go. So let us look at the code. What happens when the clone has started? Now here, once the clone is started, we are going to wait for the space key to set it to its right position. So when should the space key be working? Only when we have taken a white brick and not yet placed it. So remember, we had set the variable to one here. So if space key is pressed and white brick is one, here now we change the brick count by one, saying we are placing completing to place one brick. Depending upon whether brick row count is one or it is two or it is three, we have to place it at the right position. Now, what is the placement? It is the math table which you just created. So our first one is at minus 201. Now, always remember that on the screen, only the original brick, can you see the X and Y are only for the original. These clones, they do not have, see I'm moving the clone, but you don't see X and Y moving. The clones X and Y does not move on the screen. So if you are finding it confusing that you are using some value based on the clone and it is taking it to another position, that is the problem. Okay. So always remember, if you want to get your positions working, it has to be with the original, not with the clone. So here we have set what is the starting position of X. And then we are saying that based on the white brick count, we are subtracting one and multiplying by one zero three. And we have set the Y position. So this will happen for the first row. For the second row, the X position is because it is being placed here, not right from the starting. And the Y position has changed. Here the white brick count minus six, what we are doing is because we have already consumed five here. Uh, so the white brick count has to be subtracted by six for this math. Your math should be working properly for your game to work. And once this white brick has been placed, we set the variable to zero. And this forever loop for this script can come to a stop. Now you will see there is some extra code we have added. So for instance, we are saying, because we've got two bricks, a white brick and a narrow brick. So once we have taken the white brick, we want the white brick to be placed before we start the narrow brick. Like whichever brick we have taken, we want to finish work with that. So that's why we have set a condition. The key white brick is pressed and only if the narrow brick is not in movement right now, that it is zero. Only then you clone the white brick and you let us work with white brick. Otherwise you wait till the narrow work brick is done. Because narrow brick, once the work is done, it will be set to one. Now, when do we want to generate this clone? We have used another wait that says every time you wait until white brick is zero. So all the same, like we are using these two variables, narrow brick and white brick to just ensure that once the brick is taken, we do not try to do multiple bricks at a time. This is the code for one 
white brick. Now you want to do similar code for narrow brick, which of course the biggest change is going to be your math calculation for the narrow brick. I'm not going to show you the CAD code for the narrow brick because I definitely want you to work for it. And I want you to add the third row at least. And if you can make the wall taller, go up to fourth and fifth row. I'm sure the players would love to play it. Start row by row and work on your map. Try to understand how it works. Do the calculations on a paper pen. That's very, very important for this kind of game. This is a little bit challenging. You're using a lot of concepts. Even the code itself is not too much. Yet you're applying a lot of different concepts to pull it all together. If you want, you can add other fun things like a timer. Go ahead, be creative, continue to code. Ta-da!